Sometimes an entrepreneur has a lucky break and stumbles across a successful product overseas that's unknown to the UK. Our next entrepreneur, Karina Oldale from Yorkshire, has done exactly that. And now she wants a dragon to come on board. I'm Karina Rodell from Envirothor. I'm here today for 115,000 for 17%. We're a family run business. We specialise in granular and fluid de icer. It's an alternative to rock salt. This product will work down to minus 55. It's 90% less corrosive than rock salt. You can spread it with your hands. I have it in my hand in there day in, day out, and I've still got a thumb and four fingers. It's pet friendly, child friendly. It doesn't damage any surface at all. Our existing customers are airports, councils, retail outlets, stud farms. I'd like to invite you all up now to come and have a look how it works, and I look forward to any questions you've got. A pitch to tackle a national gripe. Rotherham-based Karina Oldale believes her product helps planes, trains and automobiles combat the effects of our icy British weather. She needs £115,000 in return for a precise 17% share. What's it doing, just absorbing it? It's absorbing it and watch, now it's gone darker, what it'll start to do is start to penetrate down into the ice. Her product seems to have struck a chord with one dragon at least. Now, rock salt leaves a mess on my drive. Yes. What happens to this blue thing that I put down? Doesn't stain, doesn't leave a residue. Does it dissolve? Yeah. So, do you manufacture it? We ship it in. From? China. And does anybody own any particular intellectual rights on this prop? The manufacturers. How did you come across them? Oh, on the internet. I started talking to them and eventually went out to see them. So you found it yourself where no one else had. Do you have the only distribution rights? Well, don't go. <laughs> I, I need to know more than... <laughs> what have you got? Sole exclusive distribution for UK and Europe. But I've got to hit a target within five years. It What's extended. your target you've got to hit? 40,000 tonnes. Is that 40,000 tonnes over the term of the five years, or is it just... Any one year. Just to save me a lot of time and headache trying to work it out, what would that make your turnover? About 10 or 11 million. Right. It's not often that an entrepreneur renders the dragon speechless, but Karina seems to have done just that. It's Deborah Meaden who's first to recover. So... What's, what shape is the business in at the moment? Right. First year, the turnover was 27,000, and I made a loss of 64,000. OK. Year two, 192,000 break-even. Year three, 923,000, with a profit of 203,000. I can explain why there's such a big jump. Year four... One no, I think you're talking about... <laughs> projections. Uh, they're, they're the projections. OK, OK. So, why do you think you're, you're suddenly going to go from 192,000 to 923,000? Right, I've got a customer that I've been working with for two years who we've got to modify it slightly. And once it's modified, their order is 130,000 tonnes. Corinna, what's the modification it wants? What they do is they do a lot of freeze-thaw, freeze-thaw. With rock salt, their product deteriorates. They want something that deteriorates less. Who's working on the modification? China. OK, you say it's a family-run business? Yes. So who's in the family that's running it? My husband and my son. But I'm the majority shareholder. 
Okay, so one more question. Um, yep. I've forgotten what it is, but it's going to come back to me. <laughs> you know what it's like? <laughs> you know, it's so nice because it makes, me, makes you, you seem know what it's so like normal. When you get a senior moment, you know what I mean? Do you want me to ask some questions? No, because my question will be gone then if you do that, Peter, and it will come back <laughs> when you're in mid floor. So, but I'm starting to give up now. It's not going to come back. And it was a very good question. <laughs> Shall I ask, Duncan? Go on. Might cover it. <laughs> oh, that, I've, the question's came back. I've got it. Karina. Yes. How much money have you and the rest of your family put into this? 240,000. 240,000 pounds. It's a revelation that shocks the dragons. However, the South Yorkshire businesswoman remains calm and composed. Now, Peter Jones wants to delve deeper into the detail. Karina, what did your husband say, the fact that you've spent 240000 of the family money? Well, he actually said to me, I'm very proud of you for what you've done and for what you've achieved. Are you very rich, Karina, then? No, we just graft. We're grafters. This will happen because I can easily see it doing the projected figures. Easily. What if it doesn't? I've had a meeting this week with an international supermarket and it's 90% certain that we're actu they're actually going to go with it. Who's the supermarket? Tesco's. And they're going to sell these pots? And how much stock have you got in value? Uh, 265,000. So you've got... You, you haven't spent 240000 developing this business. You've got stock. Yes. You just need to sell the stock. Yes. Is that stock at cost or at retail? No, that's at cost. What would you sell it for? About six fifty. There seems to be a game of cat and mouse in the den as the confident entrepreneur drip feeds information. But that's a risky strategy. What will Deborah Meaden make of it all? Can, can you give me an idea, then, of the price of this compared to what they currently use? If you put it side by side, this is a lot dearer. But when you start working out the benefits, it actually then becomes more commercially viable. How much more expensive? It might be double. Can we go back to the supermarket? You've had a meeting with them. What, what when you say 90% certain, why do you think that? When I first started talking, they actually said it would be for season 2014. I've spoke to her quite a few times, and in the end, I started ringing her up every fortnight, and we started laughing about it. And she's actually seen us this week for this next season. And she just said there's about 2,000 forms to fill in. What's happened now? Have you had a letter of intent? Have you had any...? No, it's... Um, it was just some of the stuff that she said to us. It was just... They were all the buying signals. So... OK. Um, from where I sit, you are the eternal optimist. No. I, I don't feel as optimistic about it as you do. I think you've got a tough slog to try in these times to sell somebody something that's twice as expensive as the thing that they're currently buying yeah. and they know works. So that's your challenge. Okay. So I, I, I won't be investing. Thank you for your time. So, so I'm out. Thank you. The strategy backfires as the genial businesswoman fails to convince Deborah Meaden and Duncan Bannatyne looks to have made up his mind, too. Corinna. Yeah? You know what I think? I think the Tesco women said, oh, she's a lovely lady, I can't get rid of her. 2,000 forms, because she wanted you to leave her office. She no. Wanted, you know, they're putting stepping stones. I don't think there's a big market for this. I don't think there's any big customers out there. No, I, I don't agree, because we've actually got B&Q in Ireland. How many have been ordered? They was disappointed that they didn't sell more, but they had no snow. But they sold about 2,000 tubs. You know, I think you're just kidding yourself. You've lost £300,000. It's gone. No, I'll sell it next winter. OK. Well, you do that. I will. And I wish I was wrong and you were right. <laughs> <laughs>
That's like a red rag to a bull. I can't invest in this. OK. I am out. OK. Karina. Yes. I think that you'd be able to sell the ice that's to your left to Eskimos. Thank you. But I'm not sure you could sell the product that you've got to them. I wish you the very best of luck, and I am pleased at least you have an amount of stock that at worst, if you were to sell, you would get the money you've invested personally in this venture. But if you don't get the bites this year, don't be optimistic that next year is going to come the lucky order. And I'm going to say that I'm out. OK, thank you for your time. Intrigued they may be, but Karina is unable to close the deal with two more dragons, and she has just one last chance of success. Karina, any way we can find to melt ice and snow mm. quickly and safely will be a massive advantage to industry, business, yeah. householders, everybody. But to actually maintain your licence, you've got to turn over £11 million. Yeah. 40,000 tonnes in one year. It's a huge target. It, well, it isn't, it isn't. If you get one of the airports, they use anything up to 500,000 tonnes in a bad winter. How many airports would you have to get? Only one. And I know you think I'm very optimistic, but I've been working on Europe, and Europe gets a lot more snow. Right. One of us is barking mad. It's not me. I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you your full £115,000. But I believe it's going to take so much work I'm going to want 50% of the business. I can't. I can't. I've been given a figure by my husband and my son. And I just can't. Unless we can negotiate. What about if I hit the figures, would you then give me a percentage back? This is a high risk strategy for me. Yeah. So I will want 50% of the business. I can't. I really can't. I'd love to, but I can't. Karina, I expect that. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to say, I'm out. And I wish you luck, and I wish you proved Duncan wrong. Watch this space. <laughs> It's a disappointing end. Plenty of dragon plaudits, but the risk-reward ratio was just too high to negotiate a better deal. Karina leaves with nothing. <laughs>